Hi, my name is Daryl Peterson and I'm the manager of the Applications Engineering Department here at MicroMeasurements. I'd like to take just a minute, a couple of minutes, and show you an example of a half bridge circuit. This particular one is a half bridge circuit that's used in order to compensate for thermal output. You can think of thermal output as a temperature induced response uh, from your strain gauge circuit that's a function of the temperature changing and not of the mechanical strain in the component. And oftentimes when you're measuring, using the, the response of strain gauges to measure the strain to calculate stresses, you want to remove that thermal component and this is one of the ways that you can do that. So if we take a look at this image, what we see is that we've got two active strain gauges installed. One is on a cantilevered beam and that's really the, the part of this system that's going to experience a, a loading. And the second is installed on a coupon of the exact same material. In order for this to work, these materials have to be identical. The gauge is preferably selected from the same packaging and then they get wired together into a half bridge circuit. So you've got two strain gauges that make up one side of the bridge and then you've got two fixed precision resistors that make up the other side. And these two strain gauges will end up sharing one of the corners of the bridge. In this case, it's the S minus corner of the circuit. So if you look at it, you've got your active gauge effectively between P plus and S minus and you've got your compensating gauge between S minus down to P minus. And you'll notice that we've got two wires connected in between each one of these. That's also important that you keep the wire length and gauge the same between each one of those gauges in order to keep this circuit balanced and also to keep the, the wires canceling against each other when the temperature starts to change. The idea here though is that you have one strain gauge that sees the mechanical load and the thermal response and you've got the second strain gauge that just sees the thermal response. And the Wheatstone bridge, when you wire these two together into adjacent arms, electrically they're going to subtract from each other. So what happens is you get the mechanical and the thermal in the gauge labeled as R1 and R4 only sees the thermal, so you take the difference and what falls out is the mechanical load and that's typically what we're chasing after. So, just to reiterate, for this to work, the test and the compensating coupon must be made out of the same material and also at the same temperature. Both gauges must be identical and for us that really means that you need to select them out of the same package. That means that we've made them the same to the best of our ability. And, and another important factor I haven't mentioned is that the compensating material must be allowed to freely expand and contract throughout this entire temperature range for this, this method to work. If you'd like to find out more about how to compensate for the thermal response of strain gauges, take a look at our website at www.micro-measurements.com. Thank you.